Hello, today we will talk about the materials used to make temporary crowns. A temporary crown is required to create optimal conditions before replacing it with a permanent one. To make the right choice of material you need to understand some moments of polymerization. But usually the chemistry of polymers for dentists is taught in the Elvish language and does not give a clear explanation of why resin results. Let's feel like chemists and see what is what. As a rule, resin is used as a material for temporary crown, the base of which is polymers, compounds of the same monomers, or copolymers, compounds of different monomers, commonly used polymers of acrylic and methacrylic acid. They are called acrylates. They form a rather extensive class of acrylic resins, which were conditionally divided into two groups, acrylic resins, composite acrylic resins. Acrylic resins is usually represented in powder and liquid form. The liquid is presented in the form of a monomer, more precisely monomers, and the powder in the form of a polymer. Monomer is a structural unit of a polymer. All acrylate monomers are volatile and smell sharply, especially methacrylate. They are very active and constantly strive to polymerize. In other words, if the liquid monomer was left opened, the monomers from the surface begin to evaporate, providing an unpleasant smell to the entire clinic and harm to health. And the subsurface monomers will form the syrup consistency because of polymerization. Chronic inhalation of methyl methacrylate vapor affects almost all body systems. In order to quickly obtain a polymer of the desired quality, powder with a reaction initiator is added to the liquid. The initiator provokes the breaking of the double bonds of the carbon of monomers. The monomers from a liquid due to the opening of these bonds are linked to each other to form a polymer. But at the same time the methyl groups of monomer are attacked by cross-linking substance, which allows the formation of perpendicular bonds between monomers. Such cross-linking allows to obtain a polymer in the form of a net, which improves mechanical and thermal strength and reduces solubility. Thus, the monomers of the liquid create a setting for the polymers of the powder. However, not all monomers molecules will react. Some will be locked in the resin cells. This forms a residual monomer that can be released after polymerization, weakening a resin. Since it's very dangerous, its quantity will characterize the level of biocompatibility of resins and its strength. In addition to the residual monomer, there are still unresolved problems of insufficient strength, substantial shrinkage, and preparing characteristics that may cause air bubbles to enter, and poor controlled addition of components. By guesswork, plastic properties can be improved by influencing on such parameters as the molecular weight of the macromolecule of a final polymer, degree of polymerization, amount of monomers reacted, and the molecular weight distribution. That is how molecules will be located relative to each other in space. But with the improvement of the property, another may become weaker. For example, to enhance hardness, intermolecular bonds can be shortened, but then there will be a greater percentage of shrinkage. Most of the drawbacks can be eliminated by making resin at effect as a blank from which ready crowns can be milled without shrinkage, pores and residual monomer. But such crown require additional preparation before fixing. One day, scientists realized that further substantial improvement in the quality of this group of resins is impossible. That triggered the emergence of composites, which we will discuss in the next episode. Subscribe to our channel and do not forget to turn on the bell to receive notification about the new episodes. Thanks for watching. Bye.